Travis, how's it feel to be back? Uh, it feels good to be back out there working again. Um, you know, I'm certainly limited in some of the stuff I'm doing, and we're being very conscious about it uh, coming back. But uh, it's been great being out there, at least doing some of the movements again. Is it like riding a bike? I mean, when you go back out there? Or is it... A very rusty bike, yes. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, when you get a chance to go out and, and do those things that you've been doing for such a long time, you know, there's such a muscle memory that's associated with it. But then again, um, anytime that you take time away from it, you, you get rusty. You get rusty normally in an off-season as well. You know, that's what this time is for, is to kind of knock all that off and get yourself ready for training camp. So there's just another layer there. Um, but I feel really good about the progress that's been made. Travis, how much did it help that you stayed so engaged in the media rooms on the sidelines and coaching? How has that helped you? That's it. Physically, it hasn't helped a lot, but mentally and the way that I've uh, approached defensive recognition, I think it's made a big difference. Um, I, see the, I see the game a little bit differently than I did before. When you get a chance to kind of step back, a lot of times during the season you are so focused on your technique and focused on what it takes physically to, to get your job done, uh, you don't get a, a great chance to advance mentally. And a lot of times you do that during the offseason, you do your best to do that, but uh, to get to see real live looks all the time um, and see the way that defenses are disguising things and what kind of coverages they're moving to using more normally, um, I think it was really beneficial to me. And I, I've seen I've seen the benefits of that already um, in OTAs. Outside the football component, how much does it mean to your wife to have you? <laughs> On the I uh, I know it means a lot uh, just because I'm I'm available to help a lot more you know there was there was times there when there wasn't much I could do uh, to help her out and so not only was I not helping her out but she had to step up and, and help me do some things so um, I certainly am very um, grateful for the the things that she did for me and and uh, the the amount of time that she had to put in uh, to deal with it as well I don't think she gets enough credit here not to imply you didn't appreciate what you had before, but is there a new level of appreciation now that uh, you're able to do what you're, what you're able to do on the field and off the field? It's really interesting because uh, there's, there's two ways to look at it. There's the way that says um, when something's taken away from you, you don't realize what you had until it's gone. And I believe that that's the case, and I, I did gain a little bit of appreciation for what that was, but it also gives you the opportunity to look it in the eye and, and say, you know, this might really be the end. Am I happy with what I've put on film? Am I happy with what I've done in the community? Am I happy with where I am as a player? And um, I got a chance to evaluate that over a long, <laughs> a long season of evaluation, and, and I do feel good about that. And I think that gives me a little bit of peace going, going forward, knowing that um, I, I've done good things and I, can, and I can only go up from here, and, and I can only add to my resume from here. So um, both ways is a good thing, and I, I'm just glad to be back and being able to, to write the next chapter in the story. Physically, what's the next step? I mean, is it just getting to the 11 on 11 portion, or is that a ways away too? Or yeah, I won't be doing anything probably until training camp. Um, really, from the shoulder perspective, um, you know, having the having the labrum repair, uh, it's just really a precautionary thing. Uh, I, I feel strong enough in that in the shoulder and, and good enough rehab that I could go and do it, but. When it's all live, you get things in weird situations, and it, you just catch it just wrong, and we've taken a step back. So I think we're just being smart. Uh, obviously, I trust in the trainers and what they're doing and, and their recommendation there. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's best for me, and, it, and it's good for the team, too. It's great. I can work my way back in. I can knock some of that rust off before I'm, I'm back in their live bullets. Travis, when did you start having a feeling in your hands and your feet again? I started getting feeling back midway through the season last year, probably maybe two-thirds of the way, halfway two-thirds, somewhere in there. Um, and then there was a, a pretty rapid incline from there. So um, once I started to get feeling back, it was kind of a, a, a very steady recovery as far as the, the sensory nerves. Um, it was still a little bit slow in the communication with the muscles, but uh, that really came on towards the end of the season. I, I said at the end of the season last year, I felt like I, I could have played one play. You know, I, I wouldn't have been in good enough condition that I could have done any more than that. And uh, my muscles weren't in any sort of shape to be doing any more than that. Uh, but I felt like I was moving okay. And uh, for, even from that point to now, uh, there's a whole world of difference. It's still so mysterious. Have your doctor said anything to you about how fast you came on or what you can expect now moving forward? You know, I haven't seen the doctor um, in a while. I actually have another appointment next week, um, sort of a, a final check-in to make sure there's no permanent damage there. Uh, we'll go through a whole battery of tests again. But uh, a lot of it is is based just on your case and how it, how it progresses and how you can, can keep track of that. And, and I was very diligent in my return and keeping track of every single weight that I lifted all the way through it and where I was at each point, um, just because 
looking back at it now, I'll have a better idea what's going on. Our training staff will have a much better idea if it ever happens to somebody again. And um, if, if anybody's in this situation, I think they can look to that um, as a sort of example. Certainly not a uh, template for recovery, but an example of, of how it can go. The, the hard part is when you go and see the doctor, they do these tests, and they're great tests, and they tell you that you're improving, usually, hopefully. Um, but nobody does baselines for these tests. Nobody's going to go in there and get shocked just for the fun of it to, to see where you're at before you fall. Um, so we don't have any idea what 100% looks like on these tests. We can say, while well, you've improved 400% from where you were at the bottom, but where does that fall in the line of everything? So it's really hard to gauge percentages of recovery. Um, the best thing that we can gauge that on is, is weight room numbers and uh, how you feel moving around. Um, I feel good about where I'm at in the weight room. Um, I've come a really long way, and it's it's interesting because there's there's three things holding back now. There's the return from Guillain-Barre. Um, I had a, a umbilical hernia repair, so uh, that kind of knocked out my lowers for a while, and I had the shoulder repair, so it knocked out my uppers for a while. So I'm still coming back. I'm a little bit behind as far as an off-season lifting program compared to everybody else because they started a few weeks before. But uh, I do feel really good in both areas of where I'm at at this point. Yeah.